I feel very motivated to talk and get my thoughts out on this topic of quarantine and motivation. Hi, how are you? How are you? I hope you're okay and hanging in there. It's really difficult times I know for so many people right now and so I hope you are taking care of yourselves. First off, I really want to say a huge thank you to the medical workers who are risking their lives to save the rest of us. And so if you are actually a medical worker, thank you. And second is thank you, you watching right now on your screens. Because of you, some really exciting things are happening. And it feels strange for me to say that and I feel kind of bad that these things are happening to me because no one deserves to lose their jobs and I know so many people are suffering right now. But the truth is because you watch my videos and you subscribe, it tells the YouTube algorithm that, hey, maybe other people would enjoy it too. And you never know where it lands and how it lands on certain people's recommended pages, but somehow it landed on the radar of people that I never thought would ever watch my videos or would ever want to do anything with me. More on that later. Thank you so much. I really, really appreciate you. I hope you know that. And now I will hopefully say some things in this video that can motivate you and give you a little boost. I will first answer 16 questions on the topic of quarantine because four times four is 16 and it's the monthly Q&A of April. And then I will give you a few tips on how I have been staying motivated and why I'm not bored. First one, how are you feeling during this quarantine? Well, to be honest, as a pianist who is so lucky, so lucky to have this guy here with me, the Steinway also, by the way, is because of you. The fact that you watch my videos, that's the only reason why they are lending it to me for free. And I'm a bit nervous actually about whether they would extend my contract because it technically ends on paper in two weeks. But I'm doing okay. Thanks to you for, you know, helping me have this here with me and keeping me company. But also you guys who support me on Patreon, the 456 currently of you, you are the reason that I have a roof over my head and that I can eat. And uh, there's a link in the description if you are able to support me, but I also understand that this is a really difficult time for a lot of people. Because of that, I feel like I want to do more and share as much music or share as much something to lift up your spirits. And that is what I'm trying to do now. So I will stay positive <laughs> throughout this video. I did have a moment, two weeks I mean, <laughs> where I was running out of groceries and running out of food. For two weeks I was eating quite a little each day, but then eventually I found an obscure site where I could order groceries online because I am too scared to go outside. Next, how is the classical music community handling the difficult situation and how will classical musicians manage financial problems with every live performance canceled? Not good. Um, I think there was an article about how New York Philharmonic canceled the season and they're losing $10 million. I'm sure similar numbers are happening for other major or even smaller actually music organizations and that's because not only obviously people aren't going to the concerts but the people who fund these organizations and the donors themselves are losing jobs or not getting paid themselves and so they stop donating and so it's a huge problem i'm not sure what specifically people are doing in the individual cases how they sustain themselves but i think the most important is that once everything is i guess normal but you know we can't really go back to the old days i think after this i hope that everyone will go back to concerts and support the arts because arts in general and of course music is one of that it's just not a priority in society and it's getting hit really hard. Mike asks, what is the first thing you want to do other than buy food after the quarantine is lifted? I do miss going to the grocery stores to buy food. I would love to walk in the parks or to go to somewhere nature-like with my friends. Maybe hike or just a long walk would be great. I miss that. I haven't seen my friends in a long time. 
David. Are you going to live stream more often now that we're all in quarantine? I am having some meetings later this week. I really, really, really want the next live streams to be absolutely perfect in the technical side. And I do have something exciting possibly happening. And it's because of you, but I will explain later if it happens. But something is in the works behind the scenes. Mitts. Any particular pieces you play to get you by the effects of physical distancing slash isolation? Pieces that make you feel better or something? And would you be playing them for us? I mean, of course, I will share music with you that I hope will lift your spirits a little bit or just make you feel a little better. And that's why I've been thinking a lot about what to record. I will make a playlist on Spotify probably for you and link it in the description where you can listen to some music that I have been listening to to kind of make my mind at peace and hopefully they will make you feel better also. In general, Chopin waltzes are nice to play, nocturnes, Haydn sonatas are always very uplifting if you're up for it, Mozart. Imke, how do you choose what pieces to practice since you can't be sure what concerts you will play next? I choose based on what I feel like. It's honestly not too different. I am just exploring pieces that I feel like I would enjoy playing and would want to learn or perform someday. So then the natural next question would be from Elena, what are you practicing during quarantine? Box English Suite number two. I think I'm gonna make a practice vlog probably later this week. Scriabin, fantasy, and some other stuff that I'm considering recording. So I'll keep them to myself for now. <laughs> how to choose a new piece of music to play if you can't ask your teacher social distancing how to work out if it is your level try it out for yourself this is the time to explore and figure out what feels comfortable what's the right amount of challenge that you can kind of overcome and work towards so i'd say don't restrict yourself to your levels because that's completely arbitrary like levels grades just completely arbitrary so just play around tips for learning piano while we can't meet our piano teachers. Listen to recordings like the great masters, Horowitz, Rubinstein, Schiffer, mm, I'm probably missing a lot of people, Sokolov, mm, Glenn Gold. I think you'll learn a lot from listening and maybe read the scores while you're listening as well. How often do you talk to yourself? Not any more often than I usually do. From Jana, living with a large family during the quarantine keeps me from practicing slash less motivated plus more distractions. Any tips on Smart, effective practice with unavoided distractions. I totally understand how important it is to be completely in your own bubble without any external factors. So thank you again to my patrons for helping me achieve my next goal of saving up so that I can live on my own. But anyway, this is about you. Tips. Well, first off, don't be so stressed out about having all this noise happening. In a way, it's good for you to train your focus and your concentration. When I was living with my mom, Back when I was a student, I definitely was driven very crazy. <laughs> we lived in a small apartment where the kitchen was very close to the piano. And so anytime she cooks, washes, dishes, does the laundry, boils water on her kettle. Uh, so I guess first thing is don't stress about it. It's very easy to get stressed. I get stressed out when I hear sirens and traffic noises, <laughs> but it is what it is. I'd say also for any other circumstances of practicing, have a few goals that you want to achieve for each practice that you do. And maybe make those goals in your room away from the noise and the distractions and then go into your piano area and go for them. How would you suggest starting playing in quarantine if you have a keyboard or a piano? You should listen to recordings. I feel like I give the same answer to different questions, but I think listening to others is a huge part of learning. Go with something more simple like a Bach minuet or if you're going to classical or something Mozart or the early, really early short pieces of Beethoven. Hello. Due to quarantine, I'm spending more time with my daughter. That's great. I think there's a silver lining in this pandemic. At least for a lot of people, they're able to spend a lot more time with their family inside. So I'm glad you're spending more time with your daughter. I would like to know from your experience how much time I can ask her to practice and how often a day or a week so that she benefits from it 
without overdoing it. I mean, I don't know your daughter, so I can't say. There's not an arbitrary number I say. <laughs> for all five-year-olds in the world, you must practice like this and practice for this many hours. It's not about time, it's about what you achieve. I think you just have to feel whether she is happy at the piano. And if she starts getting sad or frustrated, maybe don't have her practice any longer. It's hard for me to give a definite answer to that. Have you had problems with neighbors since being in quarantine probably gives you the chance to play all day long? I definitely hear the dog doing this to the ground, so my ceiling. And I'm not sure that means it's a bad thing because I sometimes feel like he's just playing catch with the vibrations of the piano. So I hear it at different places and more and more if I'm playing in the bass area of the piano. I'm very lucky that no one has said anything, but at the same time, I don't think anyone can complain because it's not like they would come down and knock on my door and say something because of social distancing. So again, very lucky that no one has said anything, but I'm trying to be as mindful as possible. What is your next plan for your YouTube channel? You tell me. I want to hear what you actually want to see because I feel like it's getting boring. If you don't know, I make vlogs to show the behind the scenes of my career, but my career right now is inside my apartment <laughs> with this guy. So let me know in the comments. From, I guess, Tessa is how you say your name? How has this quarantine period and this pandemic in general made you realize about the state of the world and also the importance of music slash art in the world? Mm, this will lead into the second part of my vlog. It is very touching that everyone is looking to music and the arts. A sense of community, I think, is felt through a shared love for music. And I felt so touched by that. And that was 80% of why I cried in the middle of the live stream, because I felt this overwhelming sense of community. Despite this pandemic, everyone is still so connected and supportive and very grateful for that. Now on to the part about what I realized about the state of the world. Here's the second part of my vlog. You might have noticed that I skipped two major popular questions that I got. One was, are you practicing more or less? And two, how do you stay motivated or are you bored? So I will touch on that now and hopefully give you some tips from my perspective of how I stay motivated and why I do stay motivated. Do I practice more or less? I practice the same. Actually, there are two phases to my quarantine. The first phase was when my roommate was working next door and I was just going crazy because I've always been used to having the apartment to myself when I am practicing and it's just not the same when there's someone else in close proximity. So that drove me crazy. But then they left to be with their family again. So I'm actually a lot more concentrated. Some days I practice less, but not because I don't get as much things done, but because I am so concentrated that I'm able to get the things that I want to get done quicker. And there are also days when I practice a lot just because I feel like playing. And the other day I played like five hours for no concrete reason. So I guess now onto the second question about motivation or boredom. I'm not bored. In fact, I know there's so much that I can do through social media, through music, and I want to do more and give back because you are so supportive to me and there's a lot of people suffering. So I really want to do something to alleviate someone, even if it's just a few people. Too presumptuous for me to think that I can make a huge difference, but even if I can make someone a little bit happier, you know? So personally, I have to say it was a bit hard for me to understand why you would feel bored or why you are less motivated. So I took to Instagram stories and I asked you, why do you feel bored or unmotivated or lazy? Some of you even said, which by the way, thank you so much for being so honest with me. I hope that my honest feedback can, I don't know, help you a little bit, just a teensy bit. It came down to really three things. One, psychologically, it is very overwhelming. Two, things are canceled. And three, lack of routines. So I'm gonna try to answer that. 
The first one, overwhelming. This, I completely empathize and it's hard. But I think the reason that I'm able to cope better, realizing that I'm very privileged to have your support, to have a roof over my head and not have to worry about basic needs and paying my bills so much, is that I actively tune out. And I'm not saying that everyone should do this, but this is just my personal experience. News in general should be something that can, of course, allow you to know more things, but in a way that can make you be a better part of society as a result, so that you're more aware of how you should act or be towards one another in the most general sense. So if listening to the news and paying attention to the news 24 seven is making you be less productive of a being in society, I don't think that's a good thing. This is just more of a mental health. I'm not saying you should stop paying attention to what's going on in the world. Definitely, of course, know what's going on in the world, but give yourself some space and really think for yourself and take care of yourself so that you can be more productive in your daily lives. So on to the second thing. Things are canceled, what's the point? This was something that I really had to sit down, type out my thoughts, think over and over again for the past 24 hours since I've seen your questions. One, so what if concerts and competitions are canceled? At the end of this tunnel, I'm hopeful that things will be back in operation. And then if you've just not been preparing during this time, then you have a lot to catch up. So think ahead is what I would say to that, firstly. Second, is really competing or winning a certain competition the reason you play the instruments in the first place? Maybe ask yourself that question. And I would think not, although it is possible that that is the reason why you do do that. Everyone is different. I'm sure actually in other fields, especially maybe in sports, some probably did start to train for the sake of winning the Olympics, so I could see why. But in music, I would think that winning competitions is a way for you to have further opportunities so that you can play music to more people. And so that brings to the concerts being canceled part. Yeah, it sucks. I know, I know how exciting it is and how much work it takes to prepare for something and be looking forward to it so much and then have it canceled. But again, you have to think ahead. Sure, this tunnel keeps getting longer and longer. Who knows how long this lockdown and quarantine and pandemic is gonna last, but it will eventually pass. There will probably be people for you to play for in the future. So why not prepare now? Some of you are saying, my lessons are canceled. I don't have an access to teachers and I don't have school, so I don't have the motivation to practice. And I really have to think hard about why you would think that, because I would hope that you play your instruments and you practice because you love it and you want to be really good at it. So that's why you practice. And I would hope that it's not because you have to go satisfy your teacher's expectations of you or your music degree's expectation. And that is the sole driving force of your hours of labor. I hope I'm not sounding like I am on a higher horse or something. I just think maybe these are some things that could help you reflect on and motivate you. And the last thing I saw the overwhelming response that said something like lack of routine is the reason that I am unmotivated to do things. What does that say about our society? I don't mean this in a condescending way. I just mean that as a critical way to think about the world. Yes, I know it's probably very destabilizing to be suddenly in a world where you don't have to go to class and you don't have to go to a certain place at a certain time, wake up at a certain time, do certain things. But why not make your own routine if you really depend on having that structure? I don't have a routine. I feel like I have to say that a million times. <laughs> but I do appreciate a few of you who do remember me saying that I do not have a routine. What I do focus on instead is to have certain goals that I want to do. And I will do them depending on how I feel during the time of the day. If I feel very creative, I will do the creative things. For example, I feel very motivated to talk and get my thoughts out. 
on this topic of quarantine and motivation. So that's why I haven't practiced today. But instead, I am talking to you because I really care about this. And if, I don't know why. I just could not focus on doing anything else. I couldn't read this morning. I kept thinking about all the responses that you were telling me about quarantine and about motivation. So I just really, really wanted to get this out there and hopefully make someone a little bit more motivated. So long story short, I think there might be a little bit too much emphasis on relying on routines. And for those who are in school, know that very soon or eventually in a few years, you're not going to be in school and you're going to be in a different routine or maybe not in a routine, then what? So maybe think a bit more about what you want to do in life, how you want to do those things and set some goals. Here's an example. So let's say your job is a teacher and your daily routine is to go to school and teach and then come back home, maybe take care of your kids if you have any, and go to bed. Roughly, that's your routine. I'm not a teacher, I'm just overgeneralizing to try to make some sort of example and hopefully make myself a bit more clear. That might be a routine, but I don't think the routine itself is the reason that you go on living. I think you really care about teaching and making a difference in a child's education. So that's why you go through your day to day like that. In a time when I know teachers are probably very overwhelmed with online learning, so this might not be the best example, but hopefully for other fields, you can kind of think this way. Think about why it is that you do the routine that you do, the job that you do. I think I've rambled long enough. I hope that I gave you a bit more motivation somehow from just the questions I raised. I've talked for too long. <laughs> Thank you again so much for supporting me, for watching my videos, and I hope you will really keep striving. There is a reason that I say keep striving in all of my videos, and it's because I really do believe in being productive, and I hope you will too. So if you're in bed right now and it's daytime, get out of bed. <laughs> but if it's nighttime for you, I hope you have a good rest. So I will see you soon on the internet. Keep striving. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.